Hello, 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 it's me, as you can tell. <laughs> and as you're on my channel, you know it's me, uh, James, the councillor, the town councillor up here in uh, Windy, Windy, I don't think it's wet tonight, but Windy, uh, North Wales, as it always is in January, February, uh, right up to <laughs> May, June, to be quite frank. Um, yeah, if you if you if you suffer from uh, SAD, the seasonal affective uh, disorder, um, that gets you down, uh, North Wales, <laughs> North Wales, um, winter time on the coast, mm, possibly not the best place to be. To be honest, <laughs> don't get me wrong, we can have some. We've had a few very nice days actually. We've had a bit of sunshine. It's been cold, but sunshine, but nowhere near as cold as uh, if you travel inland. On the A55, uh, as I used to do many years ago, well, good God, 12 years ago now, 13 years ago, during my first degree, uh, when we used, to, we used to travel to, to Wrexham, um, one, of our, one of our mates used to drive us uh, from, well, this is the coast here, but from real, I was the last one picked up, down into Wrexham, it was like driving into a deep freeze this time of year, so um, not as cold as it is <laughs> further inland, but it's the wind. The wind can be a bit of a uh, uh, a bit of a killer. It sort of whips you, whip, whips right through you. Um, so anyway, weather. There I am. There, I, you know, here I am. <laughs> Typical Englishman. <laughs> First thing I'm talking about is weather. Uh, so yeah, it's it's um, well. By the time this is up on the channel, it'll be the thirty first of January. A month already into the new year, I can't believe it. It has shot past for me anyway. Um, quite a bit's happened in the first month. I didn't expect much to happen. New Year's Day seems like uh, <laughs> almost a year ago now already. Um, um, but uh, for you, I don't know uh, how much has happened this month. Uh, maybe you've had a quite a quiet one. Or quite a quite a busy one, but uh, yeah, it's been more um, more going on than I thought there'd be, um, which has been nice, I suppose. It's uh, uh, alleviated some of the the boredom that I sometimes get this time of year. Uh, the first couple of months in a seaside town, a seasonal town, not much going on. The streets are pretty uh, deserted most of the time. I was out last night, Saturday night. Um, which I don't often do, but I had to go and do something. Um, I had to dog sit for a family member uh, uh, last night, so uh, I walked walked there, because I can now, which is great, so I walked there, didn't see anybody, no traffic, no people, apart from when I popped in the shop on the way to get something for me tea. Uh, and then when I came back, about half nine, in a taxi, uh, again, just deserted really, but uh, that, that's sort of, again, that's almost what it's like in real, to be honest, <laughs> out of season, uh, even on a Saturday night. So, um, yes, uh, the trick is to find things to do. Um, I had a, had a lovely thing this month, actually. Just before Christmas, I was contacted by um, two children from one of my local primary schools within my ward. Uh, inviting me to come and see them on the uh, the school council, which is made up of uh, the different years, representatives from the different years. I think it was... Um, see, now this is where my age becomes a problem. Because, of course, at schools now, I don't know about you, I find it very confusing. When I was at school, it was, uh, you know, third form, fifth form, third year, fifth year, fourth year, all that sort of stuff. Uh, now it's year this and year that, year nine, year eleven, year uh, three, four, five. So I don't when they say I I don't I can't automatically sort of work out what age children that is <laughs> in year four or year six or year twelve, you know, and it goes through from primary school to high school. I can't cause I, that that wasn't the system when I was at school. So anyway. Um, I was invited to, to the school, the school council, which uh, turned out to be um, three or four representatives from years three, four, five, and six uh, in the uh, the hall at the school, uh, and obviously their teacher, um, 
one of the teachers, you know, that's obviously uh, involved in that. And so I was invited along before Christmas, just before Christmas, lovely handwritten letters, so really nice actually. Really well written, fantastic, some photographs, fantastic. Um, and I think these are two of the older children, I think, the penultimate year before. So what would that be? Five, is it? Any five? I'm not sure. Um, no, no, that's wrong, isn't it? Because it's, uh, I don't know <laughs> what age we were over there. And I was invited along anyway to come and speak to them. And uh, I thought I'd just be talking about the subject at hand, which was dog mess and dog mess bins, basically, uh, to put the dog mess in. But to my surprise and uh, slight delight, even though it was hard, only half past nine in the morning <laughs> when this meeting took place, so I was a little bit, still a little bit, um, uh, not fully awake, <laughs> really. Um, and it, a cold walk. Uh, I was confronted with a panel of uh, extremely well turned out, extremely um, uh, confident uh, uh, children who knew exactly what they wanted to say, that asked me about, and it was it was a little bit like a mini question time. <laughs> I had lots of other questions uh, to do with um, councils, counselling, democracy, and, and things like that. Um, on top of just the uh, <laughs> the subject of dog mess and dog, dog bins, um, which was lovely. I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, so at the minute I'm working on that with, with uh, one of my local primary schools, trying to get some dog mess bins put in. It might, it, see, it, this may sound extremely paltry and trivial <laughs> to some of you watching this, but this is... Uh, uh, this is the meat of what you do, you know, when you're a councillor, particular community councillor. Um, dog mess, uh, fouling, fly tipping, all constant things that go on. Uh, of course, people get cross. I get cross. I live here. I live in my own world. You get cross, you know, because it. Uh, uh, there's no need for it, is there? You know, people should clean up after their dogs. There's no real need, reason they shouldn't. They should have poo bags and uh, people shouldn't be fly tipping. I've never fly tipped. So why are they, you know? And it's constant in the alleyway. You see, absolutely constant, to be honest. Um, I don't know where you are, but it's absolutely constant. Um, as is dog mess, to be honest. And they're quite long streets, right? Quite long roads. Um, and uh, obviously outside of school is not really where you don't want it to happen because you've got the children and parents and the rushing and the rush out every morning and afternoon. Uh, so you don't really want that, do you? So um, anyway... That's one of the things I'm doing at the moment, but I was lovely. I was so happy to be invited. It was lovely, absolutely lovely. Really enjoyed it. Um, so let's fingers crossed. I can get something sorted, or we can get something sorted um, before May, because obviously in May there's going to be local elections. I think in Wales and England, England and Wales. I think we're meshed up this time. I don't think we were. I can't remember if we were actually. I think there were different years uh, when I got elected. Elected five years ago, I could be wrong, in England or Wales, but anyway, I think they come inside this time. Uh, when I was first elected five years ago, at the time, it was supposed to be uh, only four years, um, and then at some point that's changed because of the um, Senate elections here uh, last year. Um, uh, they needed to rejig things a bit. Um, actually, would have had the silly elections and local elections at the same time, which was just deemed too, too much to do at once, really. Um, so uh, they pushed us back uh, for local elections until for this year now. So, uh, yeah, I've very nearly been community councillor for the first time for five years. Uh, uh, it's uh, been well. It's been unlikely that I'm going to run again uh, for at least the past half a year at least uh, with my health problems particularly but also because I was a university uh, on hold with my uh, PhD which I'd done the first year of and then just had to stop because of health uh, but I was sort of suspended I was on hold to go back I was supposed to go back last October then was supposed to go back um, in a few days in February uh, but after a year and a half <laughs> of waiting to get my heart sorted out finally at the hospital uh, 
there just wasn't nothing had been um, arranged up until very recently. Uh, so, but I, a year and a half was just too long. It was too long, too long to wait. Now it's it's sort of it became quite clear to me and to my um, PhD supervisors at uh, at my university that uh, it probably just best to start all over again. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start all over again. I've withdrawn reluctantly, unfortunately, for the health reasons and the time, and I'm going to start again, hopefully in September. Maybe choose a different subject this time uh, uh, to sort of focus on from PhD. So that's happened in the past month. Um, and uh, finally, after a year and a half wait, um, I should be getting my heart finally seen to uh, week up, uh, next week. Well, it's going to be, let's see, yeah, next week I'm going to have it finally sorted out. So hopefully if it works. Uh, I should be fully fighting fit as much as I can, as, I, as much as I can be fighting fit <laughs> at last after a year and a half. Uh, and we were able to get on with things. And, and I mean, for example, for a year and a half, uh, I've been looking for work. But because I knew I was going back full time at some point to be a, uh, for my PhD, um, and because of my health problems, and I didn't know when that, that was going to get sorted for most of the last year and a half, almost all of it, uh, the only work I could really look for would be home based part time work, um, which was very difficult to get hold of. To be honest, I found a few things applied for a few things got a certain way, but not right to the end in the process. Um, uh, civil service things even um, got through all the stages but didn't get to the final stage you know it's pot luck isn't it when you um, applying for jobs and things but uh, yeah the full time stuff the, the, the easier stuff to find I couldn't do because of my circumstances but now of course that's off the table because I've, I've withdrawn from the PhD now so I've had to and hopefully again my heart will be sorted out in, uh, in the next you know few weeks so um all things have changed a bit um, for the good, I think, at the minute. Um, gives me time to do things. So uh, whether I do or don't stand, I don't know. 100% I'll make the decision after I've had my um, heart procedure and see how it's gone, really, and see how I feel. Uh, if I do, the problem again, that's <laughs> just everything, is I am absolutely... <laughs> a brassic, I don't think is the right word, uh, I'm penniless, literally penniless. I'm always penniless because, you know, I've spent the last year and a half on uh, universal credit. I had to, unfortunately, while looking for work, while being, being uh, unwell. Um, and that's more or less been after they take off. Because when, when you first apply, you have to wait quite a long, t long time with nothing while well, making the decision that month, really. So you get a, a sort of an, an emergency loan then, which you have to pay back. Um and then obviously you're only getting 70 80 quid a week um as a single claimant uh and then at some point you need things like clothes and stuff which you can't really afford because you can't really just afford big bills and bills with that really um so you have to take up another another sort of discretionary loan thing which you, get, which you have to pay back on top of it so basically for god since august maybe august september um i've actually been living on about 60 something quid a week which of course is impossible i've had to put it in with the uh the pot of money with my sort of family members that i live with to try and get by but i don't there's no there's never any spare money i don't have any spare money for anything um you know not even a cup of tea or a cup of coffee nothing literally nothing <laughs> people find it hard to believe literally nothing that's how i've lived most of my adult life unfortunately and as a kid uh my parents were in the same position Nothing. So, I've lived forty-seven years of my life in that. Unfortunately, having to um, be used to that, being used to that, um, which gets harder because obviously things, <laughs> you know, when you get older, you need you need to do more things, want to do more things, um, cuts you out of the sort of normal social life that you'd expect to sort of hope to be part of as a young man or a young woman. And as you get older, so you know. I've, I don't have my own place. I've never been able to learn to drive. Couldn't afford to. Um, you know, I have to borrow money if I want to get uh, 
uh, a pair of trainers because I'll sort of just, I, you know, I have to wear them till they literally fall apart. Because anyway, this is the sort of lifestyle a lot of you will understand. So um, yeah, it'd be nice to if I can get some work, actually get some money, <laughs> money in between now and when I start restart my PhD. So again, that all depends on the heart a little bit. But also I'd need some money to, to if I do run again uh, in May, um, to run my own little campaign. So I'm trying to wrap my brains about how I would, where I'm going to get that from. So I don't know. Um, I would crowdfund, but everyone, everyone I know <laughs> is similar. Similar position to me. <laughs> they don't have anything spare, so I'm certainly not going to ask anybody um, to donate to my campaign um, that I know doesn't have anything themselves really, or that's very little. Um, wouldn't be wouldn't be comfortable doing that if I do. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the month for me really. A uh, bit of progress finally on quite a few fronts. At least I know what I'm doing now. Uh, downside I suppose is is I now I, I thought or or was in the belief that for most of the end of last year going into this year over the new year that I've finally be coming off of universal credit and starting university get university again obviously that's not happening now so now I've got what six more months seven more months on universal credit until uh, until I unless I can find a job or someone will <laughs> deem me <laughs> actually employable, <laughs> um, which would be nice. Um, uh, if for whatever reason that doesn't happen, or I'm just unlucky, I get you know. I, I tend to I I often tend to get uh, to the interview stage, or or if there's a lot of things I, I apply for sort of have state pre stages, online tests, all that sort of stuff. Um, before you to get to the interview stage and I often get most of the way if not all the way through that uh, and I'm just a bit unlucky there. but I mean I think that happens for most of us doesn't it you know when applying for work or jobs and things um, so if I'm lucky I'll get something before August September if I'm not I'm going back to uni in August September so you know yeah uh, worst case scenario another seven months on uh, uh, good old universal credit <laughs> If I can keep them happy for that long, uh, which I'll do my best, obviously, as usual, to do. Uh, and yeah, so that's what's happened to me. Um, that's all I can really think of. It's January. <laughs> I don't expect a lot to happen in January, to be honest. But uh, I thought a month has gone now since my last video, more or less. So I better sort of uh, check in, let you all know I'm still actually. <laughs> alive and kicking and here and and uh, luckily for me I'm in even though I'm waiting for me heart time I'm in the best shape health wise uh, that I've been in for a long time for six eight months a long time actually well maybe a year so um, I count myself very lucky I feel very lucky about that at the moment so hopefully um, I'll be fully back to myself as I say, in a few weeks. Uh, yeah, and I think there's changes ahead this year. If I do run, if I do get back in, I, um, there are changes uh, as far as um, uh, my council work, the official side, the meetings and things, are the bits I don't particularly enjoy very much. Um, you know, but the council meetings uh, that you have to do and stuff like that, uh, for community councils, well, here anyway, um, for oh, I think it was last year or the before, I was banging the drum about um, us sort of making ourselves uh, more visible on more platforms because, because usually members of the public have to come to the actual meetings to see what was going on to interact. And I thought we'd you know 20 years in the 21st century, two decades, this is a technology, excuse me, why can't we just you know buy the stuff and the equipment we need to sort of put it out there you know on the uh, internet land you know like most councils do this was before this is just before the pandemic so this is before the zoom meetings all sort of exploded all over uh business and and and, and, and government and things like they do now um anyway at the time i was told no too expensive forget it 
Um, so that was that. And the, but then, of course, we've had to do. We've also do Zoom meetings now. So we're sort of halfway there, really. Now you know we've been doing that for nigh on eighteen months. Um, uh, and I was very happy to see that. Uh, uh, I think it's now become legislation, or about to become, if it's not already, that um, community councils should, uh, on democratic grounds, um, soon be doing just that, putting out. Um, uh, an audiovisual record and and uh, chance for participation to the public. So that's uh, great. That 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 that's what community. That's a, sorry. That's what county councils have been doing for years anyway. So um, we'll finally be on a a par there vis-a-vis -vis the information being put out. You know, um, and a lot of people. You know, as I was saying a couple of years back before. Um, we had to take to Zoom because of the pandemic. There are lots of people who'd like to get involved, but for various reasons can't come along to meetings in person. You know, people who are work. I mean, the meetings take place at six o'clock. Um, uh, well, if you're working, <laughs> if you're working, not you know, the standard hours, uh, nine to five thirty six, you're probably not going to get. And you have to get there five ten minutes before the meeting starts to be admitted. You're not going to get there in time, are you? You know, uh, if you're disabled, if you have, um, you don't have the economic means to sort of just call up a taxi and or and you don't drive and you don't know anyone that drives, uh, and you can't get there, um, uh, so you can't participate. You know, you can't bring up things that you want to bring up as a resident, um, which of course is your right whole point of the council, really, as far as I'm concerned, and us as councillors. Uh, or hold us accountable uh, face to face. Well, like I say, the technology is here, isn't it, to do that? And uh, that's one of the probably one of the few things that uh, uh, has been good during the pandemic, from my point of view, in that sense, that uh, it's proven, it is now established, it's now uh, the precedent's been set, um, that uh, meetings can be held over Zoom, they can rec be recorded, they can be live. There's no the excuses that were there about costs and all that sort of stuff. Um, as far as I'm concerned, are now blown out of the water. Um, and for me, again, it's a, it's a democratic basic, isn't it? Um, um, that uh, the electorate, you and me, get to see what our councillors are doing and saying and get to interact with us and, and uh, when needs be, hold councillors to account. I think that's one of the things we're really, really, along with sort of uh, uh, MPs' expenses scandals and all that sort of stuff, uh, and freeloading, uh, as I'm sure you probably see and I see it, uh, that goes on at the higher levels and things, um, holding us to account, councillors to account on the lower levels, uh, is a an obvious must, isn't it? Um, but... Uh, Sometimes, uh, <laughs> sometimes, uh, when I've gone into those discussions with fellow councillors, mm, <laughs> not all, but many don't see uh, see it that way. Um, I've been told many a time that uh, if the if the if the public, if our public, if our residents want to come and see us, um, they know what our phone numbers are. They know where we live. Um, if they don't do it, that's their own sort of lookout. And I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that. <laughs> You know, if you can, you're supposed to be out there. It's your, you know, your responsibility to put yourself out there uh, and be seen in between election times, which was one of the main things I ran on five years ago. Sod's law, of course. <laughs> as soon as I'm elected, I then have five years of bloody heart problems. <laughs> so for at least half of it, I've not been able to do exactly that, which is what I wanted, the whole point of what I wanted to do, which is to go out <laughs> And literally sit on the streets and ramwiling, uh, you know, at my sort of pace table, my folding table, and my chair, and uh, let people who anybody wants to come along and and have a chat and bring up what they want what they want to bring up or need help with and things. Uh, so because this sodding thing, I haven't been able to do it anywhere near as much as I wanted to. Um, so anyway, hopefully, if I do run, if it is better. And I'm physically up to it. That is the first thing I'm going to be doing. I'm already making plans about where I want to go. 
um, and who I want to speak to and would like to if they come and speak to me. Um, so uh, again, touch wood, touch wood, uh, that'll happen. But uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and the idea of party politics makes me feel almost physically sick. <laughs> Labour, Conservatives. I mean, I, tr I even try not to look at the news anymore. Starmer, John, they're all the same to me. You know, you've either got the Conservatives, or as far as I'm concerned, you've got Conservative Light, which is Labour. It's, it's not Labour anymore. It says it on the tin, but it's not. It's hollowed out, isn't it? It's not Labour. It's, uh, it's a party run by Tony Blair, Peter Mandelson, and Keir Starmer. It's Tory Light. It's Blairism again. Um, it's, it's not, you know... Despite what they might say, the policies, what they want to do, isn't uh, isn't there to, to to change my life or your lives if you're struggling like I am. Um, so, you know, uh, independence for me. I'm an independent. I don't mean independence from. I don't mean that. I mean I'm an <laughs> politically independent. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a, one of these people who wants independence from Great Britain or anything like that. No, that's not my uh, platform. I mean, I'd be politically independent, so uh, at least if I do, to give people a choice, I suppose, other than uh, Tories or wannabe Tories, I suppose they give a choice. But uh, it's a, a tradition, historically, traditionally here, it's a very uh, safe, as far as, well, up until recently, as far as uh, national elections and to, to Parliament or the Senate. And uh, in county council and town council, it's been fully Labour, 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 Labour all the way. But in the past couple of years, uh, Labour have lost uh, the parliamentary seat to the Conservatives. And then last year, they lost the uh, Senate elections to local Conservatives. So um, if that trend continues... Um, Labour will not be doing as well on the council this time round as they have done uh, over the past uh, past years and elections. So um, I'm all for that. I I, I think a monopoly. <laughs> I think a monopoly uh, from either side is bad for people, the ordinary people. Um, um, you should have a, a healthy mix. Um, you know, because that'll force everybody, really, to sort of cooperate a bit more, wouldn't it? You know, and actually talk to each other and and compromise. Um. Anyway, that's my take on it. Right, we're approaching thirty minutes. I've rambled on. If you've reached this point or stayed <laughs> this long, well done. <laughs> um. I hope you're all well. I hope you had a good month. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe. Looks like we're coming to the end, perhaps, of the, the scary couple of years now of the, de the dreaded COVID um, with this Omicron variant, which seems to be a lot less dangerous, um, which is what we've all been waiting for, isn't it, really? I know restrictions here in Wales were virtually lifted completely uh, a couple of days ago, um, so I'm assuming it's the same in England and and uh, Scotland virtually and, and Northern Ireland so um, I hope so I hope hopefully we're now going into a month of much more normality that'd be good wouldn't it <laughs> after all this time that'd be lovely and um, even even an almost completely normal summer uh, which would be fantastic so uh, anyway that's the half hour mark virtually see you next time stay safe take care and please, oh yeah, please do comment down below anything you want to say. Subscribe if you'd like to. And I'll see you next time. This is Councillor James from Real. See you in Tatar.